um, so yes, a uh, plan to end advertising. And um, for obvious reasons, um, my figures and numbers and, and uh, most of the data is based on the situation in Sweden, because I live there. Uh, but um, I think most of it is applicable, at least in Europe. Uh, and, uh, well, the, um, similar plans can obviously be made for anyone, anywhere in the world. Um, so, let's start with an old uh, quote. So, this is from 1957. It's a Swedish author, Sven Lindqvist. He used to be a journalist. And then he published, uh, I think it's around 150 pages, a book, um, just criticizing advertisement in general, saying how horrible it is and why it is horrible. And uh, after that, he had, um, it wasn't really possible for him to work as a journalist anymore. So he uh, started traveling around the world, writing uh, uh, travel diaries, basically. And one of his most famous quotes is this, advertisement is to capitalist society, what the political propaganda is to the communist society. And uh, yeah, this is from 1957. <coughs> so the first part of my talk is called what is the problem with advertisement? And uh, I mean, it kind of speaks for itself, but I still have some, uh, have tried to separate it into some points, such as Ads are annoying, and I have called this the human perspective. Um, and they're annoying, first of all, and most of all, because they are forced on us, and they are basically in many areas everywhere. And um, this is, of course, much worse for us who live in cities like Oslo and Gothenburg. Uh, in my hometown, you can hardly see advertisement outside in the streets, but uh, yeah. So the situation is slightly different there, but still, when we uh, do come home and, uh, I don't know, open up a newspaper or turning on a um, machine with uh, images, then uh, there are dangers of advertisement there too. Um, so we are generally resent uh, being told uh, what to do or how to think, if it's the state or a parent, but uh, for some reason, uh, the revolt against advertisement hasn't really bubbled up enough yet. So why do we allow the advertisements where the fundamental motivation behind telling us what to do is to increase some company's profits? Second point, ads affect consumption. Um, and. Uh, <coughs> that it does affect consumption, has been shown in many studies, and obviously, if it didn't, we wouldn't, uh, we would probably not see much advertisement. Uh, what I do not know uh, is whether we actually would consume less uh, in total without advertisement. Oh. Oh. Um, something that has been assumed by many um, env environmental groups. So in 2015, there was a in Swedish newspaper, a um, philosophy professor. He pu published a, 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 a much discussed article in a Swedish major newspaper, arguing, among other things, that um, if we see it advertising, we would consume less of the limited material resources and live simpler and happier lives. Of course, uh, considering the general political climate, there were numerous replies from uh, mainly neoliberal politicians and advertising professionals, which kind of is like a neoliberal politician, uh, claiming that we need economic growth and to buy new things if we're going to save the environment. And obviously, I don't by that, but also I think that it should not matter. I think that if we do have environmental problems, we should be able to handle them uh, regardless of the amount of advertisement. And if we want to pursue any democratic way 
of addressing the environmental problems. Um, then we need discussion platforms with the least possible amount of short-term economic interest. So perhaps then more important in this uh, professor's argument is the happiness perspective. So assuming that A adds effect consumption and that B all people have the same income with or without the existence of advertisement, wouldn't we be happier fulfilling needs and wants that actually come from within than those that are forced on us from the outside? Perhaps we could spend less on replacing our working appliances and spend more on culture and experiences. But we can only hope. Point three. <clears throat> uh, something I find particularly strange is the lack of uh, capitalist critique of advertisement. So we all know the capitalist mantra of competition as a basic principle of capitalism and its promise to deliver better goods at lower prices. However, it seems fairly obvious that this does not apply in a world saturated with ads. Given two equal products from two different suppliers, whoever spends the most on advertisement will have a serious advantage. And in this way, advertisement slowly creates monopolies or more commonly oligopolies, since they are apparently okay with the competition laws. Therefore, uh, if a company is not among the two, three largest uh, in its sector, it should be definitely be skeptic to advertisement. Uh, also in this world where products are competing for our attention through ads, uh, even if a non-largest company has a good and unique product to offer, the cost of marketing is extremely high. Meaning that they have to take a huge chance to um, promote the product. And this is another way in which the bigger companies consolidate their dominance. Uh, with sufficiently high ad prices, they can be sure that it's as difficult as possible for smaller companies to enter the market at all. <coughs> and then we come to a deeply uh, problematic area, as if the others were not. Uh, um, so we like to show our support for freedom of speech, at least to certain levels. But regardless how beautiful or important a message, it's hard to convey it particularly widely unless, of course, it's accompanied by an insane amount of monies, or uh, it could be argued cats. Um, but disregarding the facts, I th cats, I still think with that we place a value on journalism. <coughs> but despite the ever-increasing media landscape, journalistic space seems to be more limited than ever, and it's setting the bar for any new mes message aiming to pass its threshold. This is, of course, not entirely new. The, it has never really been meant to be easy to receive journalistic mention. The problem is that it's very easy to bypass using the ad space, and that has been growing instead of uh, journalistic space, which has been shrinking. The result is that it gets easier and easier to convey a message that brings profit, but more and more difficult to convey a message that brings peace and prosperity, especially if it includes a message uh, criticizing advertisers. And uh, here I don't want to go into the problems of shaping the message itself. Um, <coughs> But the, yeah, there is um, ge generally quite good separation between journalism and advertisement, in, um, and it's generally upheld as a matter of um, yeah, publicational pride, uh, with a certain exception. Last year there was a Norwegian car magazine that sent out a, uh, yeah, a, a complete um, edition, a special edition of their magazine, which essentially was... A, commercial 
for a single brand car, uh, but it was framed as it was uh, just a bonus edition of their own um, publication. <coughs> um, so this brings up another way in which advertisements corrupt the media landscape. As long as ads make up the majority of um, an income for any publication, those that targeted, uh, target the wealthier uh, demographics will inevitably receive the most funding too, and also dominate the democratic discussions. So it's no surprise that the, most of the media is made for the middle class and generally content to perpetuate the status quo. Uh, another part of this is also how media readers are commodified to be sold to the advertisers. And this is also not a new thing by far. There's a uh, classic Swedish example from the 1950s targeting potential advertisers. And it reads, win the woman, conquer more, choose more effective weapons, advertise in X. There you will be talking with her as a confidant because she trusts her ex and reads it from front to back. So as we know, this is nowhere more obvious than on the internet. Several of today's largest and most well-known corporations, they build their fortunes almost exclusively through advertisement. The ones who can provide the advertisers with the most accurate information on their potential customers, they have an advantage. And of course, this leads to mass commercial surveillance. And few companies operating through the internet see any alternative business model to advertisement. Uh, as we all know, in internet ads are also a good way for any illegally uh, malevolent attackers to reach your web browsers, and instead of tricking you to go to a suspicious website, they simply buy ad space. And obviously this is uh, much like a scenario where anyone who advertises on the tra tram is automatically allowed to go through your wallet. But to get back to the bigger perspective, um, the online advertisement industry has transformed the internet from a decentralized network of peers to an oligopoly of giants, just as homogeneous and limited as their analog counterparts. <coughs> um, so the journalistic outbreakers that are small, they are marginalized, easily suspected to be scams or fakes due to a relative lack of brand recognition. While at the same time, creating fake news has been found a very easy way to obtain income through ads. So I suppose most of you know how the um, Macedonians, um, there was a group of teenagers who uh, found out that they could make a lot of money on the previous American election. And uh, they tried running uh, fake news pro-Clinton and pro-Trump, but the pro-Trump paid a lot more, so that, that's what they went with. So <coughs> if we uh, agree with the above, Ads are a very, very silly way of spending an enormous amount of money. Uh, in 2015, it was more than 10 billion euros in Sweden alone. So basically, we spend 10 billion every year in a rather small country like Sweden to casually corrupt democracy, media, public space, the market and the digital infrastructure of the internet in the most annoying way possible. So of all the Keynesians holes to dig, I think we have probably chosen the most stupid one of all. And even if one does buy the claim that extreme consumption is in any way good for society, there is no real proof that advertisement actually affects the total consumption and not just the type of consumption. Yes, so here comes the answer to, <coughs> or part of it anyways, what can we do about it? <coughs> Step one, very simple, use an ad blocker. <laughs> so it's actually very, very simple to save the internet. Everyone, use an ad blocker, 
and uh, particularly important, don't feel bad about it. So since the rise, is ad, rise of ad blockers, uh, it's increasing popularity, we have seen several ad-dependent websites starting appealing to our conscience, asking us to disable our ad blockers to increase their income, or outright blocking visitors with ad block installed. And the thought is actually quite astonishing. Uh, widespread ad blocking can sink the primary business model of several of the world's largest uh, corporations. And ex in extension, it also drastically reduces the economic incentive for commercial mass surveillance. Uh, recent, uh, relatively recent development, which was very interesting, and it may sound good, but it's actually quite problematic, is that Google has announced plans to introduce an ad blocker by default in their Chrome web browser. I don't know if this has started yet, but uh, it's at least been announced. Uh, and obviously, they are doing this so that their own ads won't be blocked, because we won't install an additional ad blocker. So, uh, use a real ad blocker. And if you use Adblock Plus, make sure to uncheck this little box that allows so-called inobtrusive advertising. Uh, another alternative is a plugin called Ad Nauseam, and in addition to blocking ads, it will also click them as much as possible and cost the advertisers a lot of money. <laughs> the second, and uh, a bit more tricky, is to ban public advertisement. And uh, for this, there is not only an interest and uh, kind of a momentum going in, in certain groups, um, I think mostly uh, environmental groups, but there, is, there are also precedents for this. So most famously, uh, in Sao Paulo, in 2006, they uh, created the clean, state, uh, clean City Law, which prohibited most ad outdoor advertising, as well as certain type of store signs. In one single year, the city, which is admittedly very big, removed 15,000 billboards and 300,000 oversized storefront signs. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to find any proper studies uh, showing the economic effect of uh, this ban. Um, I do remember having read in a newspaper article shortly after, like uh, well, a year or two after, that uh, it actually had a huge uh, benefit to the local economy, that people would buy less international big brand name products and buy more locally, which benefited the city's economy. Um, but yeah, this is uh, from memory and not a, a recent scientific study. <coughs> um, but I do hope it's true. But Sao Paulo is also not the only place to have gone in an ad-free direction. So you have Chennai in India, which has banned all billboards, and Paris, uh, Paris and Tehran has also made some advancements towards limiting outdoor ads. Um, and the latest initiative I have heard about is the French city Grenoble, which in 2014 became the first city in Europe to ban commercial street advertisement. They replaced all the signs with community notice boards and or trees. Uh, for these initiatives, visual pollution is usually cited as the main motivation, uh, which is basically the same as my first uh, and perhaps least important point, actually, that ads are annoying. But for me, at least, the democratic implications are uh, more important. A uh, simpler and should be more easy law to implement is to replace the blacklist with a whitelist for unsolicited mail and telephone calls. So in Sweden, and I think in Norway too, uh, there is a register that you can um, yeah, register at if you are not interested in getting um, yeah, t telephone salespeople calling you or to get uh, targeted uh, ads in the mail, 
but of course you have to register to not get it, and this is absurd. It should be obvious that if you want something, you should register to get it, and if you don't say anything, it should be illegal to send it to you. And as with the advertisement industry itself, this is also a self-regulatory practice. So it's not uh, entered into law, it's just uh, a way for um, the advertisement industry to prevent government intervention. <coughs> and then a slightly more tricky part is to change the financial support model for publications in, uh, yeah, in my suggestion, in the reverse proportion to their ad income. Um, so in Sweden at least, um, most publications that are that have subscribers can get government funding. Uh, but this uh, government funding for has been uh, changed um, well, several times and usually it's to benefit the major publication companies. So if you have a lot of subscribers then you get a crazy amount of government support and as we saw in Gothenburg I think last year even if you do go bankrupt uh, the government might still save you because you are very big and beautiful. But if you are small, um, then it's a constant struggle to get enough subscribers to reach the minimum limit for getting government funding. So a fairly obvious proposal in my point of view is to simply change this. So the more ad you, ads you have in your publication, the less government funding you need and therefore the less government funding you get. And uh, the way I'm thinking to do this in Sweden is to um, ah, reach out to all sympathetic minor newspapers and publications and ask them to help draft a, um, a law pro change proposal that um, benefits democracy. Next one, <coughs> we can also protect the language. So there are a lot of things that are marketed, told us are free or gratis, but if it's ad financed, it's not really the case. So actually we have paid for it twice, you could say. Uh, once for creating the ads and one for seeing the ads. So anything that is marketed as free gratis and comes with ads attached, you actually paid a lot for it. Um. <coughs> and within a national context, this can be fixed by legislation on the basis of consumer protection. It's, uh, if it's with ads, it should not be called free. Uh, but with re regards to internet services, it becomes, from a legislative purpose, a bit more tricky. But obviously we can ask... Uh, so one um, thing I've noticed is that this uh, Google um, App Store on the telephones, you can filter um, for certain things, but you cannot filter for ad-free. You can filter between costs money, or you have to pay directly, or you don't pay, but you can't filter, give me those that don't have ads. You can also not fil filter for properly free open source software, which is perhaps even worse. <coughs> yes. So, how do we get these legislation and plans through? So, the first and uh, perhaps the simplest perhaps, is to start a campaign. So the idea is to have a website, which is the campaign hub, uh, and this such a campaign, it should include both people and companies, and since non-huge companies have an unfair disadvantage, I hope that we could get many of them to support such a campaign. Uh, it will actually drastically reduce the amount that companies have to spend. Obviously those that have an 
a huge advantage because they have the most money and can advertise more, will lose. But in my, uh, my idea is that everyone else will win. <coughs> and this is also where you get the smaller democratically motivated publications to help develop a new proposal for financial press support. And um, in Sweden, there um, exists a way to report um, a publicly seen ad, well, actually, also goes for um, publications, TV channels, if it is offensive. Uh, but to me, actually, I think that all ads are de offensive, more or less by definition. And uh, the purpose of this um, uh, yeah, reporting mechanism is basically the same as I mentioned before. It's a self-regulatory um, position uh, held by the advertisement industry. And, uh, of course, they don't want any government intervention there either. So they take it upon themselves to... Um, to hire one person is called Reklam Ombudsmannen. And uh, this person will go through um, <coughs> all uh, complaints. And if they find that it's uh, particularly sexist or um, uh, misleading, uh, then they will uh, publish it somewhere on their website that some company has at some point uh, broken their own rules. So it's kind of like a public shame, but it's not very public because nobody really gets to see it. <coughs> and also the process of reporting these ads, it's quite cumbersome and it could be greatly simplified. And if we make it simple enough for people to use every day all the time, we will enable people to report any time that we are annoyed by it. And the the purpose of this is to uh, show people that it's okay to be offended by, by ads and that there is a way to react. It is to increase the statistics to better show that people actually find ads to be an offensive problem. And we can hope that it reveals the potential incapability of the advertisement industry to actually regulate itself. Currently, between 500 and 1,000 ads are reported every year, and it would be nice if we could multiply that with at least 1,000. So, <coughs> um, through my um, preliminary investigations, there seem to be not many good studies, scientific studies, that show the social and economic impact of ads and ad bans. And so I'm kind of hoping that more academics will find this a highly interesting topic and uh, help me to prove that yeah, advertisement sucks. So there are some things that I haven't really bothered with too much. One of them is spam and... Uh, ah. Basically, we have had this, uh, I think next year coming up is the 40th anniversary for the first spam. And we haven't been able to do very much about it, but lots of work is ongoing and we have some filters. But basically, it's not the same type of problem as uh, other advertisement. A more problematic issue is perhaps the sponsorship of events. And it used to be originally like I don't know, uh, 2,000 years ago that when someone rich or some industry-ish, I'm not sure you could even call it an industry then, but anyways, that a sponsorship was a gift. It was not a payment for ad. And this could be a way to, to con continue too, that if you, if you do sponsor an event, you might not need to, uh, to to get the actual ad saying that you have sponsored the event. Perhaps the world will be better, perhaps 
uh, your company will do better if you sponsor the event, regardless of the ad. Uh, one obvious problem for us, of course, is that most free software conferences tend to do to rely on sponsorship. But I hope that if we can get some more public uh, momentum against ads, that we will also find other ways to finance such events. And besides, in any case, we are the ones who pay for all these ads and sponsorships. So it doesn't really matter. The money comes from the same place anyways. And of course, there are other ways of showing dissent to advertisement, including removing them, changing them, or replacing them with art. And although that's a loving, lovely thing, this campaign uh, is not intended to publicly support or advocate such actions. Rather, we will secretly applaud them when they happen. So, uh, second old quote to um, finish it off. So, this is from uh, uh, a man described as the father of modern advertising. And uh, obviously, he changed his mind after being deeply embedded in the advertisement industry for some time. Man is at his vilest when he erects a billboard. When I retire from Madison Avenue, I'm going to start a secret society of masked vigilantes who will travel around the world on silent motor bicycles, chopping down posters at the dark of the moon. to start the work on it mm. and now if you have questions please ask them uh, yes where should we start please you won't have uh, your voice amplified but it's recorded so please. All right. Great. Uh, yeah so this is uh, awesome I've been thinking much of the same things for a long time and uh, I just wonder about this uh, campaign you talk about uh, it's a website is there some more information and this app, is it under uh, development or um, can we get it? And you know, there are different types of laws, I guess, for different countries. So uh, I would very much like to see this app being able to, like, you can tell it which country you are in, and, and then you can get the information about what types of uh, uh, advertisement you can complain about and stuff like that. So just a bit more information about this. Is it under development? Is there how many people are involved? Stuff like that. Thank you. Yes. So uh, I'm kind of sorry to say that uh, the answer to your last question is one. It's me, basically. And uh, I have a domain name, no website yet, uh, no uh, app yet. So uh, yeah, I need help. <laughs> that too, yes. I wonder if <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I wonder if you've thought of search engine optimizers as a strange bedfellows ally. Obviously, SEO is primarily designed to increase the amount of advertising fed into the search stream. On the other hand, the reason Google works so hard to make SEO uh, fail is so that they can insert their own ads. Mm -hmm. If we ended up with a situation where SEO was so good that most uh, Google search results were advertising, it might very quickly help people see how in, insidious and dangerous it is. So I almost feel like maybe one of the right things to do is help SEO uh, <laughs> companies make Google search results really poor. Have you thought about about that as a possibility? Uh, not yet, but uh, it's an intriguing proposal. Um, yeah, it, it is a problem that Google actually uh, has done away with so, uh, optimizers or um, it's a benefit as well as a problem. Um, but it's an in interesting thought, yes. Yes? Mm. Uh, how do you think advertisement could become more beneficial and ethical for, for the public? Uh, again, please. Uh, how advertisement could become beneficial and ethical for the public? Because mm. all you talked about is more like a black and white thinking, mm -hmm. that it's all bad and well, um, there, there are other alternative models that could help. 
Well, uh, I personally, I, I think that all advertisement that is forced upon us is a bad thing. Uh, it's a uh, for-profit speech that is intruding in my space. But obviously, I don't mind opt-in advertisement. I, I, there is a small record shop in Newcastle, and I subscribe to their newsletters, which is basically just advertisement for what they do. And I really love getting that, and I read that. But that's something that I've specifically asked to get. And I think that if we reduce advertisement to whatever we specifically ask to get, it's uh, not much of a problem for democracy or, uh, or the companies. Does yeah. that answer your question? Or? You listed a, a set of things that advertising corrupts, and you missed a very important one. The essential purpose of advertising is to subvert the target's will and cause them to behave in a you know, to, to buy something they didn't actually want. Mm. That is essentially its whole reason for existence. And corrupting the will of the public mm. probably ought to be held up as one of the most evil things you can do. Yes, I agree. Um, I've been thinking about it. It came up as a, a question at an event once before. And um, <coughs> what I have been kind of thinking is that uh, obviously it is true, but I'm not sure that the rhetoric is suitable for this campaign. Uh, it, it sounds, uh, I mean, even if it is true, it sounds too much like. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, like a conspiracy theorist uh, rhetoric. Absolutely, absolutely. I, I'm not. Uh, I, I'm not saying it's not true. I'm saying that I, I'm not sure the rhetoric would work in this, in, in this context. Hmm? Uh, wondering if um, countries that um, try to do that thing that they did was it Grenoble? Yeah. Would that be possible with these uh, trade agreements like CETA and TTIP and stuff? Would it be possible to even have that? Because then they could get sued for not getting future profits. I'm not sure. Yeah, um, the question is whether with uh, TIP or CETA that uh, countries, cities can be sued by uh, the companies for banning advertisement. And I have no idea. Uh, mm. There is a, a danger, of course, but I, I do not know. I have. Mm. Oh. Speaking of precedents for banning ads, there's actually quite widespread bans on advertisements for cigarettes and alcohol those would potentially provide a larger scale s space for studying the effect of advertising limits that, that may indeed help to get across the message that if we stop having this ad advertising, it, it helps. Mm. You know, it, it improves the situation. You see. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, th that's true. I, um, um, many studies have shown that uh, there are uh, two questions in behind there. Uh, that was first on the... Ah, okay. I can finish the answer uh, yeah. first. Uh, uh, so, yeah, there have been st studies showing that alcohol advertisement, tobacco advertisement, when you ban that, the consumption goes down. Um, but I don't want bad advertisement replaced with less bad ad advertisement. So that's also a reason why I don't enter that. Thank you very much for your, your questions. Uh, yes.